Thank you so much. So before we proceed further, I would say that I really enjoyed this uh, panel that happened before. And as we have heard a lot of you know, words today, which we have been practicing every day though, which is CDP, data, technology, et cetera. I think it's great that we also have advertisers with us to share with us in terms of insights and experience that they hold from a brand's perspective. But before we move further forward, uh, there was one sentence that echoed the room, right? Which was, programmatic gets you cheaper inventory, right? Which was a statement long ago, but now a fact which says that, and in fact, the panel is all about programmatic, a game changer. So we have come a long way in a very short time, and I think that's the power of programmatic, which we all will be unleashing today. So while we're talking about programmatic being, being such a game changer, we know that even digital advertising has been an ever-evolving state, and we all are working into it, so we know at the pace at which it is moving forward, right? So especially post-pandemic, we have seen advertisers and all marketeers, they're finding it more and more ways to reach out to their audiences, more advanced ways, and with digital marketing moving heavily towards programmatic, even brands are changing their strategies, and that to a very fast pace, right? So let's just understand like, you know, what are the uh, advanced strategies that our brands are focusing on, that they're developing on. And let's open the discussion with our first question for today, which is for Mehrunosh, uh, Mehrunosh for you. So at the time of maximizing the most from programmatic advertising strategy, we have been hearing a lot on having an omni-channel campaign approach. So what is your take on it? Yeah, thanks for the question. So. Uh, I'm going to actually go back and, and give a reference to Hollywood, okay? So uh, you've, you've seen kind of movies of the future, etc. cetera. Uh, one such movie that comes to my mind is Dune. I, I don't know if you guys have seen it in the audience. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, Dune actually is an award-winning, Academy Award-winning uh, film. And uh, it talks about the uh, future of uh, the human generation. And actually, if you see the movie, it actually goes back to basics, you know? So there is a mix of a lot of physical, I mean, there are, there are queens, there are kings, there are people with magical powers, and then there is a lot of digitalization as well. So there, is, there was a lot of discussion which I, which I heard about programmatic and, and a lot of things, but I firmly believe that the fundamentals of marketing do not change, you know, Kotler, has been the king of marketing, will be the king of marketing, and will continue to be the king of marketing e even in the future. Now, when Kotler wrote uh, Kotler, uh, the, the book of marketing, I mean, there wasn't a lot of digital marketing. There was a lot of stuff which he spoke about targeting, positioning, uh, which he spoke about identifying your audience as well. I think those things do not change. The basics do not change. I think. To a large extent, a lot of people in uh, digital marketing and in programmatic, et cetera, kind of, uh, to a large extent, give a lot of importance to the entire digital world. It's almost as if everyone is living a digital world. You know, we are, we are not living a digital world, right? I mean, we are, we are having a panel discussion. I mean, we could have actually had this on Zoom, or we could have had it on Teams, you know, had it been digital. The fact remains that we are having this uh, discussion physically is because we want to meet physically. Now, those things do not change and will never change even going ahead in the future. So if anyone feels that, you know, we are going to live in a digital world going ahead in the future, I think uh, is, is really mistaken, you know, really needs help. So omnichannel is something which is obvious. And I think an omnichannel experience for the consumer is, is absolutely obvious. The person cannot live a digital life all his life. You know, so you could do a great amount of things in programmatic. You know, there are so many trends that are moving towards programmatic with respect to, you know, uh, moving from uh, OOH to digital OOH, you know, with respect to a lot of bots and AI doing a lot of things with respect to programmatic. You know, uh, there are things uh, which are with respect to uh, a more personalization to a more relevance kind of uh, targeting. Uh, that my friend actually from uh, Dimag does, and he's got a very strong point of view with respect to personalization versus relevance, you know, uh, with respect to targeting. So there are a lot of things that we do with respect to that, but the basics remain that, you know, the consumer wants to see the ad when he is most vulnerable to seeing the ad, when he wants to see the ad. He gets really disturbed 
when he does not want to see it because he sees it, sees it as, a, as an intrusion to privacy. You know, that, that's something that programmatic often is to a large extent, you know, blamed for. You know, I often see an ad and I see that, okay, there's someone, you know, who's following me. There's someone who knows what I'm doing on a daily basis. I mean, this is dangerous. I'm not going to accept cookies anymore. You know, that's a very different thing. So personalization to relevance is a, is a very, very important topic. And, and that is something that uh, my friend Yazdi can really talk about, you know, who's from Dimag here because he's done a lot of study on that. But that is really important because, you know, targeting the consumer when he, when he wants to see relevant advertising is very important and not you know, when it is personalized to him, because he, he feels li like there is an intrusion to privacy. So coming back to the subject uh, that you asked, uh, omnichannel is something which is very, very obvious. So for in instance, in, uh, we've, we come from a very traditional business, like we are from Godrej and Boys, we are into the interior business, we are into the appliances business. So with respect to interior, there are things that we do, like for instance, we ask the consumer to actually upload the photograph of the of the furniture that he wants to buy, and accordingly we'll be able to suggest him, you know, the right kind of furniture that he wants. You know, so those are things that we do. For instance, for appliances, if the consumer, you know, wants a demonstration, we actually give him a video demonstration of what he wants to do. So uh, those sort of things are something which are relevant and are going to be continue being relevant. With respect to programmatic, I think it is very, very important to understand your consumer well. And that is only going to come when you are actually fly on the wall. And when I'm meaning fly on the wall, meaning that the consumer still uh, kind of moves between the physical world and the digital world. He is going to go to the physical store, and that is a time when very traditional fly on the wall, consumer inciting, uh, understanding the consumer well, understanding who is buying it, understanding when is he buying it, becomes very, very important. And therefore, just completely relying on bots or AI for your programmatic, is, is not right. I mean, you need to understand the consumer well. You need to go back to your basics and kind of alter your strategy rather than completely depending upon programmatic. I, I heard a lot with respect to uh, finding out the ways in which you know he's, he's going to go and his surfing history and stuff like that. You know, Safari has stopped cookies. What are you going to do, going to do about it? You know, and, and there are a lot of other people. There is an entire movement right now in America which talks about you know, privacy. So in the future, what are you going to do about it? You know, it is, it, is, it is not going to be possible to completely rely on bots, right? So finally, I, I to a large extent believe that an omnichannel experience, relying on the old age marketing and understanding your consumer well, altering your digital strategy and programmatic according to you know, what you want is important. I'm not denying that programmatic is important. I think it is very, very important. And I again repeat that a lot of people talk about personalization. I think relevance is very important. And that is a difference uh, between relevance and personalization, because personalization is intrusion. Relevance is something where you actually are receptive to the ad. And therefore, relevance uh, and hyper-relevance is much better than hyper-personalization. And I think, uh, I mean, Yazdi is sitting in the, in the group here, and he can talk a lot more about it because he's knowledgeable about it. And we've done uh, a lot of projects with respect to B2B as well as B2C clients. And we realized that the age-old uh, technique about speaking to the salesperson, speaking to the consumer, becomes really, really important other than you know, just relying on your online uh, data. Yeah, thank you. I, I, I think I spent a lot of time, but I thought you know, it was important. You no, know, absolutely. And I would, I, I'll say I couldn't agree more, especially when you say that basics don't change, right? Fundamentals, they remain the same. And I think that's the, the word crops up media modernization, that this is not plan A or plan B. This is about where we are and where are we going with evolution. And that's where, when you, when you made this point, which is very relevant, that it's not just about personalization, but also about relevancy. So when we talk about omni-channel, and I think that's the base is all about, that yes, digital is, evolu is at an evolution, programmatic is at a main gameplay, but how programmatic helps us reaching a consumer in an omni-channel world, which is not just digital, but also offline. Because consumers have not moved totally towards digital, it's still, an e it's still an ecosystem where we are going to physical stores, offline stores, and hence how programmatic can build and bridge that gap for us. So Nishant, I would also want to understand, you know, similar perspective from you. That when you talk about an omni-channel approach, then what is your take on it? How do you see programmatic, you know, bringing that solution, especially when we talk about physical world and digital world, both of which 
them are interconnected for audiences? So uh, what I feel is that we need to tap the uh, consumer journey, okay? And then accordingly understand uh, what needs to be shown where, okay? Uh, once you do that, a uh, very important factor that comes into the, this whole proposition is your CRM activity as well, the, where you store the data, okay? And how it is evolving over a period of time and how can you actually identify the right set of an audiences and how do you show them the right kind of a communication, okay? Obviously, uh, searches happens on digital uh, and then later on the activity, the final end goal of sale mostly happens on the offline medium. So it's very important to understand what you show, when you show and how you show. Uh, in, in the right proposition, in the right frame of mind, uh, looking at his interest goal level, and then accordingly target it, okay? So that's what I feel is, and mostly when there's a planning happening, or so the ad tech and the martech basically needs to talk to each other, okay? It's not that people are working in isolation and it's completely fall apart, you know? So this is my thought on this piece of, yes, omni-channel, right now going forward, I think this is the best way possible that uh, all the marketeers would be taking out and uh, in spending their monies to ensure that uh, it's not about spending only on one part of it, but obviously the second part of it is also very important. And both will continue to grow and evolve together. It's not this versus that. This is what I feel about. Right. Thank you, Nishan. And also, I would feel that uh, when we talk about omni-channel strategy, clearly the answer there is that we are seeking efficiency, we are seeking outcomes, right? So, Nishant, uh, again, thank you for the two bits that you shared here. Prabhakar, this question goes to you. So we know that prog programmatic advertising is at an ever-evolving stage. And we know that traditional advertising is still a very big chunk out there. And it has to work in a rallying with each other, right? So when we are talking about driving outcomes, which is highly important and something expected from programmatic as a strategy, we would want to know that when it comes to you, what do you see uh, you know, programmatic driving as a business result for your brand? Uh, thanks, Timpy, for the question, and thanks, uh, Exchange for Media team, for inviting me here. Uh, see, I'm not very fond of jargons, you know, so pardon me if I use them in absence of plain English. Okay. So, I mean, uh, Mr. Pithawala talked about Kotler. He's absolutely right. I cut my teeth uh, on brand parachute uh, almost 15, 16 years back, you know, then worked in Seat Tires, Danone Dairy, PayU, then now Angel One. Just to give an example, we are acquiring half a million customer on a monthly basis. And among the most profitable listed company in our business, you know, what you call FinTech, with double inverted commas, okay. So, uh, you know, so, so fundamentally, you know, talking about Kotler, see, we are talking about consumer decision-making process. That is as basic as you can get. Then the next thing is a customer journey. Now, customer journey is about touch points, about they watching traditional media, be it, TV, outdoor, print, radio, what not. Or what they see in digital, be it on Google search, social media, YouTube, OTT, what not, right? And the third thing is funnel, right? Now, when it comes to business outcome, you know, and I'm heading both sales and marketing for my organization. Uh, so for what matters to me is eventually like, you know, what comes out at the bottom of the funnel. I mean, can I call them my customer? Can I kind of put some cost metrics to it? Can I put some revenue metrics to it? You know, that's where that's where my you know game stops in a way, right? What I find uh, very amusing is that even people who talk about programmatic and performance marketing are very much wary of, you know, kind of linking them to certain metrics. I mean, that amazes me. That beats me. I mean, every time I hear that you know this implementation will take this many months, this you know, this stabilization will take these many months and all of that. Fine. I mean, that's okay. I mean, I, I do programmatic for performance marketing. I look at it in certain way. We have DV360 in place. We have been using it for the longest time. Then we have brand marketing. I mean, we partner with Group M's Axis, you know, and we do programmatic there also. Now, question which comes in is that, uh, why am I doing programmatic in the first place? You know, what role does it play? I can only answer about, you know, my sector, you know, rather than adding the guess for other sectors, you know, where the customer journey and funnel would have changed. See, fundamentally, people are, uh, you know, I mean, very curious about financial topics. Sometimes they're afraid of stock market. So they have queries, you know, they get exposed to the idea of investing in the stock market. Maybe they do it on television, maybe they do it on radio or maybe print. But when it comes to the topic as simple as how to open a DMAT account, what is DMAT account? You know, how to kind of, you know, look for different, uh, what is the blue chip stock? What do they do? I mean, they go to YouTube and search. They go to Google and search. 
I mean, you'll be surprised they also search on MX Takata or like, you know, other, other, other search platforms. And they used to search in TikTok also, right? So, so fundamentally, uh, what programmatic is telling me is that, you know, I mean, there are so many customer journeys possible. There are so many customers within a channel, there are so many audiences possible. So let me take that burden out of you. You know, rather than you planning channel wise, I will take the burden out of you. I understand the audiences in this channel. I understand, you know, what kind of messaging will work. I will take care of the dynamic, dan uh, dynamic creative optimization and all of that. And I will do it for you in the background. My trouble starts, you know, when, um, you know, I have to choose one platform to another and both are black boxes. And none of them are allowing me to kind of, you know, um, you know, I mean, I mean uh, make them accountable for certain metrics, right? So, uh, I mean, that's a long story. I'll cover it during the rest of the panel discussion. But fundamentally, to my mind, I think programmatic is very, very important. You need to experiment with a platform, sometime like just having faith in the team behind it, or sometimes if the partner is allowing you to kind of experiment, they are subsidizing certain cost, they are willing to run a pilot with you and all, all of that. I think that's the way you can figure out that, you know, how the traditional and programmatic can come together to bring the business outcomes you like. I mean, I'm very happy the way we have grown up from a 50,000 account opening per month, two years, two and a half years back to half a million that we are doing now. So I believe we have got something right, choosing the right channel, choosing the right proportion of lower funnel, pure performance marketing vis-a-vis -vis programmatic. Thanks. Thank you, Prabhakar. Thank you. And I would say when you say that, Apart from programmatic, what is a DMAT account? I think that scares many more <laughs> than any of the programmatic jargons. But yes, I really love the fact when you talk about programmatic and performance. And I think that is one thing which I hear from almost all advertisers because that goes hand in hand. When you talk about programmatic, what is the performance are we getting? So Nishan, similarly on the same lines, uh, let's talk about it. When we talk about outcomes, there's this word performance, right, which has to be there. So an industry has evolved way too much for us to understand that performance is also beyond just a lower funnel, and it has many meanings and forms around it. So we would want to understand from you especially that when you look at performance, how do you define that, especially with the background that you have on AI, and you know AI can do wonders to you if you, if you only have your matrix right around all the funnels that you're planning for. What's, what's your take on that? It's a nice question. <laughs> and you know, over a period of time, we have been just hovering around performances as leads. Okay. Now, it's good that marketers these days are moving beyond leads and trying to understand what better capabilities programmatic can bring to the system. Okay. In terms of uh, the reach, in terms of the frequency, in terms of the cost-benefit analysis, uh, in terms of uh, the visits, so these are certain funnels that the marketers should be look taking into consideration and are taking into consideration than only the last funnel, which is leads, okay? So if you, if you actually spend some bit of it more on your top and medium funnel, obviously I feel that, you know, your last funnel will accordingly give you the best results, okay? But if you, these, in today's, I see there are a lot many new companies or the fintech companies who come on board, starts with the lower funnel. The pyramid cannot be <laughs> topsy-turvy, right? You need to do the right things to reap benefits, okay? So you spend on some bit of branding, give some bit of time, let users understand what the product is all about, and then the whole journey, then it'll start over a period of time, using programmatic as a proposition, you will be able to see that you know, your results are far more better effective than just doing a lead generation campaign, okay? The consumers whom you basically acquire doing programmatic uh, will stay for a longer duration of time rather than using any of the other channels just to drive leads, okay? It could be affiliates or it could be anything else, okay? So that is what I feel, you know. Uh, uh, when, whenever, like, we go f uh, for sales and we we make the client understand that, you know, being into programmatic ecosystem, uh, you need to give some bit of time, okay? A minimum of three to four months for for the platform to gain uh, uh, certain data points, basis which we can actually then be able to understand, create look alike of those audiences, and make the reach more, far more efficient and better, okay? And basis that. I will be able to drive results post uh, around three, four months down the line, you know. But if the brand says from day one, you know, so they have to be a bit more patient if they have to use uh, performance in programmatic. Otherwise, there are m multiple ways to, uh, you know, drive uh, leads from day one, okay. That's right. what I feel about right. it. Right, thank you. And I think that's, uh, that's a great insight, especially when you talk about data, right, that th you have to look and analyze your data sets that you have at your hand. But I would also say that when we talk about performance marketing, especially today, 
and or programmatic driving performance, it cannot be just inventories or just data. The, it's, a, it's a whole suite right there, right? So when we talk about even bottom funnel or top funnel, we know that there are many elements, especially creative data technology, all has to come together to build that perfect picture for you or even you know, get you closer to your outcomes. So Mehernosh, I would really want to understand from you, especially when you're working in a, such a big portfolio, right? For you, challenge is not just about having one strategy, right? But having customized strategy for each brand that to across the pillars, which is the important and the key. So how would you define at uh, looking at you know, driving performance for your brand, especially when you look at data, creative, tech, all of it together? So uh, uh, Dimpi, I, I, wanted to ask, I wanted to ask you this question. How many times have you actually been spoked by the way in which you have got messaging online? Have you been spooked often? You know, do you talk to your friends that, you know, these guys know this thing about me. These guys know that I've traveled to this place yesterday. Have yeah. you been spooked? So honestly, if you were asked ask me this question a decade ago, yes, many times. But yes, because I'm into this, so I understand how it how it works. But my friends and family, yes, they do. Yeah. So a lot of people actually get spooked by the way in which uh, prog yeah. programmatic works, right? Right. And that actually brings me back to the point with respect to uh, personalization versus relevance. So you, you spoke about creative. It is very, very important that the messaging that you are actually giving to the consumer when you are using programmatic is appropriate. Uh, and it doesn't spook the consumer. Like for instance, if he's, if he's chatted or if he's, if he's put on Facebook about something and immediately he gets to get some message saying that, you know, you, you wanted this and you know, here it is. The memberships. You know, we so know. that really spooks the consumer and, and it, it spooks a lot of people and it says that, hey, you know, what am I doing? And these guys have, have all my data. So it's, it's kind of a dichotomy and uh, a lot of people feel that programmatic with respect to AI, with respect to a lot of things uh, is going to be able to work well if you're going to use better AI and stuff like that, it's going to work well. In the US right now, there is a lot of use of uh, DOH, you know, that is uh, digital out of home. It's not yet come into India, but it will soon come into India very soon. So it is, it is very important to use the right kind of data and the right kind of messaging. And therefore, creativity becomes very, very important. And therefore, as I said, that human intervention becomes very important. So it is very important to evaluate your creative on a time-to-time -time basis with respect to who it is exposed to, what is the cohort to which it is exposed to. You know, you need to identify the cohort and accordingly your, your creative needs to change on a regular basis with respect to who is most receptive to it. And uh, it should be designed in such a way that you are actually telling a story. Uh, like for instance, in traditional advertising, a lot of people say that you, know, you need to say a story that connects to the consumer. It is the same in the digital world as well. We often forget that and uh, we uh, kind of send the messaging which kind of spooks the consumer. And that is not the way in which the advertising needs to be done. So as I said that the principles of advertising, the principles of creativity, they all remain the same. Uh, as you do with respect to your offline audience and you make sure that your creative is something that connects with the audience very well, you need to do the same with respect to your online audience as well. And that is something that is, that is very, very important, uh, is, is what I feel, yeah. yeah. So I can clearly see that one message that is coming out very well here is that no matter what kind of data tech you have at hand, what's important is the decision that you take, right? How much relevance can you bring out of it? And I think that makes total sense because uh, especially when you talk about hyper-personalization or connecting with audiences, that is it is all about, that the consumer has to get an impact with your campaign and that can only come when you think about relevance, which is for them, not just for your strategy. Yeah, I, I just wanted to add one more thing with your yeah. permission, Dimpi. So right now, if you were to look at the 25 years old, you know, they consume at least three sort of media, you know, at least three, you know. So they, they would actually go on the OTT platform. They would perhaps read uh, the digital newspaper or, or they would see the TV. So. Your, even your advertising needs to be consistent across all of these three because they're consuming media. The, the millennials right now at least consume more than three media right now. It is, it is different from what it was earlier. And therefore, the relevance of your communication becomes even more important.
Right, absolutely. And I think that is where the term comes from, which is hyper-personalization. That it's not about one creative, one messaging, 10 media channels. It's about understanding the mindset your user yeah. has. So I, I just want to clarify, I don't believe in hyper-personalization. <laughs> I believe in hyper-relevance. Relevance. Which because hyper-personalization is, is, a, is a term which is, to a large extent, abused by digital marketeers. It is hyper relevance which is important. Hyper personalization spooks the consumer. Yeah. It's hyper relevance which becomes more important. That is a trend which is emerging. Even if you were to look at the latest digital uh, programmatic advertising in the US, people are moving away from hyper personalization, which used to be the trend earlier, to hyper relevance right now. Yeah. Right, I clearly understand. It's like audience saying that don't bother me more. I saw your ad thrice on three channels. I converted now, leave me alone, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but great insight, but I would also want to understand similar from Prabhakar now. Prabhakar, when we talk about, so Mr. Pitawala does not believe in hyper-personalization, but I'm sure you have a little different take on this, right? And we would, and the panel is all about understanding your expertise, your insights, your take on it. So what's your take on it when we talk about creativity? How do you see creativity, especially being in a category which is so different from anybody else, right? FinTech remains a challenging category especially when you talk about terms like DMAT to an audiences where you're looking at scale to conversions. So it's not just conversion for you, but also educating them at the same time. So how do you look at creativity in this industry? Yep. Thank you. I mean, just <coughs> taking it on after Mr. Pithawala on this. See, for me, you know, I mean, advertising, if you look at it, you know, it's a very, very simple, I mean, I heard the definition somewhere when I was like one decade old in my profession, they say advertising is advert attention. Malab dhyan bhatkana, that's advertising. Now question is, customer says, hai, dhyan bhatka diya yaar. just make it worth my while. You know, entertain me, educate me, make me laugh, make me cry, make me do anything, right? So question is whether you call it a personalization or relevance. You know, to me, I mean, what's the point of personalization if it's, there is no relevance? I mean, for me, I mean, they are equivalent, you know? Uh, I just can't show my name like, you know, PT, smile, you are become a multi-millionaire after buying this stock. I mean, that's not personalization for me, right? I mean, I want to become a multi-millionaire, I mean, everybody wants to, but is there something else you want, you can talk to me about? No, that's, that's what I need to see. See, I mean, um, I'm, I'm not very negative on uh, programmatic, let me uh, say, say it like this. So performance in programmatic, you know, that's possible, let's measure it. There's a way to measure it. Programmatic for brand funnel, even that's a possibility. Uh, there's a long tail now. I mean, I was telling somebody that when I used to review uh, TV uh, planning or large media planning in past, it used to be very easy decision. Today, my team comes with a long tail of OTT platform, uh, video publishing platform and whatnot platform. And everything will have a 15 lakh, 20 lakhs kind of budget. But when I add it up, this will one and a half, two crores for a single campaign, you know. And then, of course, I'm spending a lot on, on, on bigger media as well. So my trouble is that, you know, how do I go in depth of all these? Because I do not understand. For many of these uh, things, I'm not even an audience. You know, for augmented reality, what people are liking, Snapchat or, you know, somewhere else. I mean, it's very difficult for me to, but yet I have to make a decision. Because fundamentally, as a sales and marketing head, if I'm approving this media plan, tomorrow business doesn't happen, I cannot go and tell my CEO that, you know, you have to be patient, right? <laughs> I mean, I will lose my job after two months, right? So fundamentally, I have to, uh, and I always tell my team that, you know, I mean, uh, in any campaign, na, ek hathi ka daant hota hai, khane ka aur dikhane ka. In the sense, one thing you can tom tom, make great case studies, win big awards, and, and no disrespect to any award, by the way. But there are something which really work. Those are like basic, you know, basic staple for your. So this is a basic understanding. Now coming back to creativity. See, creativity for me uh, can happen at scale. But for that to happen at scale, you need to really, really understand at least the major personas. I mean, you can do then permutation combination of those personas and can talk to millions of, uh, you know, individual uh, customer in that sense. But creativity at scale, I mean, that's, that's the challenge. And there are a lot of examples now. You know, I think uh, uh, Shah Rukh Khan and Cadbury's ad, everybody talks about, you know. I mean, that's an amazing thing. I mean, you really understood what that SME segment want, you know, what uh, Shah Rukh Khan brings to the table and what technology can do. So I think, uh, and creativity and, and almost a decade back, people used to talk about Old Spice. You know, Old Spice actually, you know, made interesting uh, 
you know, kind of, uh, you know, campaign and, you know, just personalize it together and, you know, give a very customized kind of reply. So those things are very much a possibility and creativity is where we thrive. Fundamentally, I mean, uh, we are humans, you know, our emotions matter, whether even in metaverse they matter, forget about the real, uh, real, real place. So, I mean, this is where we need to put a lot of uh, hard work and uh, the fundamentals do not change. You have more, better tools now. Earlier it was a steam engine, today is a bullet train, uh, but they have to take you from point A to point B, you know. I mean, you cannot change that. Similarly, when you didn't have a programmatic, that, 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 that time also we were doing business. Now there is a programmatic, we have to do business. We have to shy away from the jargons, at least the people who are responsible for business, at the same time engage, because if there is a better tool and it can bring more value to your competition, if they adopt it before you, I think then you are doing a net disservice to your business. So have a healthy, uh, you know, kind of uh, disrespect or suspicion, but engage, experiment and conclude. So, I mean, that's how I would look at creativity, personalization, relevance uh, in, in that respect. Thank you, Prabhagra. I think I really like the fact when you say that, you know, of course, challenge what you have in front of you, but still invest into it and do your pilot campaigns, do your test campaigns, and then take the learnings out. And, you know, great insights coming in when we, when we hear about relevancy, that it's not just a term hyper-personalization, not just about in technology being implemented, but how relevant is that for you and your audiences? And from you, I understand that emotions play a vital role. Yes, we don't change. We are humans at the end. But Nishant, also from your perspective, I'd like to pick your brains on this too, because coming from a very tech background and, of course, a different experience altogether, how do you look at creativity? So yes, uh, uh, it's very important that we, we don't ignore creativity in our overall scheme of things, okay? Uh, uh, I think uh, Vishal sometime back talked about DCO, okay? And how can DCO bring value proposition for your overall programmatic campaign, okay? Uh, I still remember uh, around 10 years, 15 years back when we used to run campaigns for Sher Khan. And, uh, and uh, you know, uh, on a brand side of it. But at the end of the day, the requirement was only leads, okay. What can you do? So it's only the creative, you know, changing the creatives, changing the communication in different ways. The end result is the same as leads, right? We were able to achieve that. I'm saying from that perspective, yes, till now, uh, in terms of how you communicate, in which format you communicate, how do you tell your story? That also is very important, okay? It's not about just vanilla, JPEG creative or any of the, you know, uh, creative that you send it. Now, video as a, an, as a tool or as a creative performs much better these days than your normal regular creatives, okay? Because you're able to tell the story, okay? So, at the end of the day, you will be able to achieve your own objectives, whatever you want to do it. Uh, from, not from the, from the performance side, it could be leads. From the brand side, it could be your VTR, you know, your engagement, your time spent, and all of it obviously makes a lot of sense, okay? Uh, uh, from, if, if I talk about uh, brands like Marico, or if I talk about brands like which, which are purely video-centric and heavy on video, they would, they would not want ki kitna saman bika. At the end of the day, it's what? Even it's a soap or even it's what, an oil or whatever it is, but they, they are more bothered about the reach, the engagement, you know, uh, the storytelling, that's what they bring to the table, okay? But from the other side of it, on the fintech, the story changes completely. The story is all about performance from day one, okay? So, uh, creative plays a role differently in whichever format you want to look at it, in whichever way you want to look at it, in whichever matrix you want to look at it. So yes, obviously creative plays a very important role in the current scheme of things. And I feel that nowadays, uh, media planning is, is secondary, but Bef before that, you need to understand, if I make this creative, how do I position it to achieve what objective? Media plan will come second. First, let's understand the whole thought process behind uh, why am I going to make, what, I, what I'm going to achieve out of this creative that we are going to make, okay? And then the, the whole story starts. Earlier, it used to be the media plan, and then the creative element used to come into the picture. So I think uh, nowadays, it's more to do with the holistic approach. Uh, and I think it's performing better, right? It's performing well for, and we have seen results as well. So that's my... Right, right. Yeah. Yeah. With your permission. So, uh, I mean, um, in, in Angel One, like we put a brand track in place way back in 2019. It's a quarterly brand track. And let me tell you that, you know, uh, whether you're working on awareness, top of the funnel, or consideration, or purchase intention, and even if it's a storytelling uh, and changing the imagery of your brand, that can be captured. So for example, you know, Angel One uh, uh, is for youth, or Angel One is a hassle-free digital experience, 
or angel one uh, uh, you know i mean uh, is cutting edge technology so i want to really so so let me tell you there are tools available and this that goes back to my fmcg learning from companies like marico you know so somewhere i have to capture it and 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 this another thing i want to tell young marketers in the room that you know uh, every organization is different and and fundamentally it flows from the ceo of the business because at the end of the day he is accountable for everything you are just a function i mean let's say it like you know i mean <laughs> business is <laughs> business marketing is just supporting business right so fundamentally you have to find out what is the right narrative in your organization i mean what kind of correlation can you give on your social media fan base increase or engagement or you know your middle funnel thing how will you link it up all up and over time if you do it correctly then you will get license to experiment you will get amazing budget and you can actually feel uh, very fulfilled as a marketer because you'll be working at the cutting edge of what is possible to delight your audience engage them and of course of course at the end of the day make them buy you know so that's that's how i look at it right right thank you prabhakar and i would clearly say that i think this is one one opinion which differentiates really a lot here where we talk about you know what really matters most so we talk about data technology but what we can clearly see here is especially nishan building on your point that when you look at media planning the perspective should not be which channel should i put in but the fact that what is my communication who is my audience and what is right relevant channel for it uh, for some it could be heavy on youtube for some it could be heavy on ott while something for display etc but i think it should flow from your creative communication and then selection pick and picking up on channel and i would say that yes this is where we have advertisers playing a bigger role for us because when you're looking at a strategy you look at it from a very 360 degree perspective not just only data and tech and uh, just to also wrap up our panel's uh, discussion i would really urge you to share or summarize your expertise your learning especially for everybody when you think from a advertiser perspective when you look at programmatic what do you really suggest for them like top 3 things that you say you know focus on this and that's how you should go about it may i just start with you yeah thanks <clears throat> so i i think going ahead uh, white label software is going to come into being you know because everyone is going to advertise on programmatic and how you're going to be able to differentiate yourself with respect to the others is going to be very important and that's where white label software comes into being you know because everyone uses the same tool everyone you know uses agencies which have the which have the same tool and stuff like that so you're going to land up with the same audiences and you're going to be land up saying different communication and stuff like that but you know white label software helps you to actually diagnose you know who your right audience is you know and is going to be able to uh, do sharper targeting and and sharper positioning and sharper sharper messaging also so i i think that is going to be the way ahead i think uh, there is going to be a big evolution with respect to out of home you know because there is a lot of money that is spent of out of home and and you know a lot of money is wasted because you don't get the relevant audience and therefore digital out of home is something that is going to come into india very soon it has already come into us but it is going to come into india very soon how marketers are going to be able to use that is going to be very very important i think podcast as well as uh, uh, music is going to be very very important those are those are things that are are really uh, shaping things up in the us those are things that will come into india as well you know but uh, relevant targeting is going to be very very important i already spoke about the difference between personalization versus relevance uh i think uh, a lot of websites uh, are going to be uh, you know uh, cookie averse so uh, with respect to how do you go about that is going to be very very important with respect to how do you establish a particular footprint or a uh, uh, a fingerprint it's going to be very important so establishing that fingerprint with respect to going ahead in pro programmatic advertising is going to be very very crucial uh, those are things which are going to be very very important and uh, finally I, i i really do believe that human intervention and in programmatic is very important so when you're doing programmatic advertising uh, regularly checking whether you are reaching out to the right audience whether the audience is receptive to your messaging uh, as i said you know there are multiple medias that the audience is exposed to right now uh, and that is just going to increase going ahead in the future uh, digital is going to be the way forward people are going to consume ott more and more people are consume, going to consume ctv more and more so how are you going to be able to uh, do the messaging in in a right manner without spooking them is going to be very important you know so uh, 
that is something uh, which which I believe are the trends which programmatic advertising is is going to lead us towards. So uh, I, I think a balance between offline as well as online, understanding your consumers well, as well as sending the right messaging is going to be very important. And I think customization, which is going to come with white label software, is the way ahead. Yeah. Absolutely. And yeah, when you say offline to online, I think DOH is a segment where, I mean, a partner's lemma, they're also driving the same. So they're getting DOH into wider adoption in India. And yes, I can't agree more that when you talk about relevance uh, and moving from offline to online, what really is important is how do you capture all the insights very well and then use it. I would also like to understand, you know, same point, Nishant, from you. What's your take? So for me, uh, it's all about transparency, okay? Uh, when we talk about programmatic, generally people talk about, you know, as in the previous conversations also, discussions that came up, uh, whether it is a bot traffic, where the ads would be seen, all of it, you know. So there's a lot of negative, biased opinion about programmatic advertising as well, you know. But thanks to all the uh, new companies or all the, these, uh, as, as uh, Mr. Pinawala said, that, you know, uh, the softwares and the, and the white label solutions basically uh, makes the brand uh, spend more on programmatic, okay, uh, making them telling them that, yes, the cats are running on a safe ecosystem, okay, it's non-robotic traffic. Um, each and every money spent is, is basically where it's supposed to be, and there's no leakage, there's no wastage. So yes, for me, it's more about transparency uh, and uh, using the right kind of a software, uh, right kind of a tools uh, to ensure that we uh, remove or negate wastages as much as possible. Right, absolutely, Ishant. And in fact, even the pre in the previous panel, our friend, uh, Mr. Nachiket from Double Verify, uh, so even if we, he had spoken on this, could have shared more. So programmatic, I think that's the strength that it brings on the table for us, especially on transparency. You can track where your ads are running. You can see how many impressions were getting shown to our audiences on what kind of channels. It's just, it's very important to understand that proper measurement stack has to be put around it, and you need to see how your audiences are tapping from one channel to another, which falls into similar line to what Prabhakar had just said before, that measurement is very important and is the key. Prabhaku, what's, what's your take on to this for all of us? Just last summarizing words. Yeah, so I'll uh, keep it short. So I think first of all, you know, you, modern day marketing cannot be managed without technology. And you know, I mean, um, and, and this is the right forum to discuss technology. I mean, because the sheer size of audience, the variety we are talking about, like, uh, I mean, of course, for last uh, two years, uh, almost 90% of our new customers are coming from tier two, tier three, tier four cities. I mean, talk about language differences, talk about sensibilities, even creativity for that matter, you know? I mean, what you show to a Bengali audience, show it to a Tamilian audience, and you'll have a very different kind of reaction, and both of them are Indians, okay? And then look at the generation gap, you know, below the age of 30 versus above the age of 30. So without technology, without measuring, you cannot do it. Second, you know, at least as a marketing uh, side of mine, I have found the custom audience look alike to be a great lifesaver. You know, because it actually, you know, I mean, helps me um, uh, scale up my campaigns much, much faster than, you know, where uh, I, I can do it uh, as well. And third thing is to all marketeers, you know, whether you are questioned this or not, please understand that, you know, whether it is a revenue behavior or cost behavior, how does it link to, link to business? Just because, you know, one uh, platform can give you reach and, you know, a big reach doesn't mean you need to be there. You really need to understand uh, will the revenue will be adequate? Like we joke in my company that we don't want customer with Jandhan account, you know. So you want really people, you know, who have disposable income and they want to invest in stock market and can, can wait for longer time. So over a period of time, if you're a marketeer and if you measure things, now, you'll see a stable pattern. And this will help you to kind of take care of your businesses at a stable level. Or otherwise, like our competition will be like five lakh customer a month, and next month below one lakh customer. No, that's not how businesses are run. So you have to uh, scale for sure, but do it in a stable manner. And technology and measurement can help do uh, do that for you. I, I just want to add to uh, the point that Prabhakar said, and I I really want to emphasize on that because he made a very relevant point with respect to how India is different from the U.S. You know where you know we copy a lot of programmatic advertising from. Uh, India is vernacular to a large extent, and as he very rightly mentioned, the penetration of digital is going stronger and stronger in tier two and tier three cities. And therefore, having your creative uh, in the language in which you know the audience connects to 
you know, with respect to vernacular is very, very important. And we have seen that with respect to advertisers also. So uh, last year, actually, the statistics shows that a lot of advertisers actually went vernacular, you know, with, with their advertising. And, and, and that shows, you know, the, uh, the connect that they wanted to make with the consumer. So he made a really very relevant point. I just wanted to emphasize that, how important that is with respect to programmatic advertising also. Yeah. Right, absolutely. And even that caught my attention too, because when you talk about, uh, especially down south for India, it's not just about language, but even within, within, within that state's, uh, same state, you see a lot, many different emotions. So your creative concept has to be very much relevant, even for that same state. You need to talk on same emotions, which can connect with them. I really loved the discussion. Thank you very much. I'm really honored to be on this panel. Thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen,